This is the first video in a series of videos dedicated to WebSphere MQ. We're going to cover what is MQ, why would you use it, how does it integrate into the larger IBM Counter Fraud Management System, system or ICFM, and basically how you can use MQ to understand and troubleshoot problems with ICFM. Now, this particular document is a free download. It's publicly available information. It's ibm.com slash redbooks. And it covers a lot of ground very, very quickly in just 74 pages. It's in fact a red paper, which unlike a red book, which tends to be about 300, 400,000 pages long, this is only 74 pages and really does a nice job of, of introducing the product. What we're going to do here is kind of skip ahead to page 18 and you'll read here that WebSphere MQ is the market leading messaging integration middleware product. So we're going to cover what that means, but this is really true. It really is the market leading uh, messaging integration product. Take a look at these numbers here. This is from 2013, a survey done by Gartner and message oriented middleware or MOM of which uh, MQ really is sort of the, the main product. Uh, ranks number one, you can see 66% of the uh, of the market here. That's excellent. ESB, which is an enterprise service bus, that uh, in the line of products for ICFM is the IIB or IBM integration bus product. Look at that, also number one. And then there's something called the business process management or BPM. And again, uh, ranked number one here for that product. And we're going to cover those in more detail, but the point is it really is one of IBM's most popular products here. And then here, just to show you an example, this is informal data, of course, but if you go to this page at ibm.com, you will see the li a list of the top 10 most downloaded software products from IBM as trials. And take a look at this. Number one is the message broker. We just looked at that. And number nine here is WebSphere MQ. Number six is DB2. So this is a very popular, popular product, one of the best uh, that IBM makes. So naturally the question is, why is it so popular? And the answer is that it solves a problem. And it's actually a fairly complicated problem to solve. Imagine that, say, 15 years ago, your company worked on a really great project. And it has been running, essentially, the core part of that company, or at least its IT infrastructure, for a long, long time. And in a lot of cases, this actually might be a mainframe, but it doesn't have to be. It simply could be a a large uh, system of computers. It's, it's anyway, it's a, an important project. And now, like happens at so many companies, you are literally have teams and teams of people working on brand new software and brand new projects. So let's say this is project B and this is project A. Well, what happens here is you have to somehow get software that was written like today to talk to software that was written 15 years ago, but doesn't probably have any idea about the technologies, the maybe the programming languages even, in this project. And the question is, how do you do that? Well, IBM's answer to doing this, and not only IBM, but lots and lots of uh, companies, literally put something in the middle. They put something here. And that is why this is called a middleware solution. And in our case, we are going to be using MQ. MQ is part of something larger, which is called MOM, or Message Oriented Middleware. Why is it called that? Because what goes in the middle here is literally transferring messages across from A to B and from B to A. And therefore, you have this middleware, which is in fact message oriented middleware and of course the question is well why i mean what what's so great about that what kind of messages are being passed back and forth well essentially what's happening here is that this software that was written so long ago needs to be able to talk to the software from today and the way to essentially do that is you need to translate what's coming out and in to this system between the two so you sort of need like a universal translator and this is something called a broker. A broker is what does the translating between the two. And the broker really is part of, imagine this is sort of one piece of the larger puzzle 
of middleware. And again, messages are going back and forth. So we could say maybe we have a message here and then we have other parts of the system we're gonna cover later on. But essentially you have, you imagine that this middleware piece is actually a kind of translator. It's a nice uh, way to think about it. And you have to keep in mind too, that both systems, no matter how they are created, are going to have inputs and they're going to have outputs, right? So you're going to have some way to get data in and you're going to have some way to get data out. And that is where the broker comes in. It's able to translate, say, an output here to an input here, all thanks to middleware. And the way it's going to do that is through these messages. And that happens all through MOM, essentially.